Hey guys, how's it going? This week we do have a bit of excitement, and we have the preliminary patch notes for the 13th patch that's going to be coming up. We will be getting the complete patch notes for the 13th patch sometime between now and the 13th. The guy who does them is sick, so instead they just talked about them all on stream. They covered most of the major stuff, so we do know what to expect. It's mostly bug fixes, animation changes. So let's go ahead and jump into the exciting stuff first off and get that out of the way. We have an extra XP fest this weekend. That is double XP on all game modes and all orders. This also applies to arcades, so you can go ahead and jump in and complete the weekly arcade quest as well and get double XP tomorrow. There is a ranked slayer challenge for completing ranked modes. The faction that completes the most will be getting 5 XP tickets, 3 XP tickets, one or the other. And then of course scales down as orders always do. Then in something I'm very excited to have happen, we have a champion status sale for up to 50% off this week. Up until the 13th you can buy champion status for a reduced cost. I don't know about you, but I picked up a year back in... 2017 for the Labor Day sale. Mine ran out this past week in November, so I'm going to be picking up another year of champion status for this 50% off sale. It's a wonderful buy, it helps with all of the event loot, it helps with gaining XP, it's just a great thing to have. So I'm glad that I can pick it up for half off again. As for other things to spend your steel on if you don't want champion status, the new content of the week is battle outfits. They actually look pretty okay. I don't think I'll be picking one up, but if I had to, I would probably get the new green battle outfit for the TND. It's pretty nice. One more thing before jumping into the patch notes. Ed wanted to share some of his tips for playing Breach. His first tip is don't solo the Guardian. If you're about to die at the Guardian, disengage. There's no point in dying in front of the Guardian by yourself. If you die there, somebody just has to come revive you or you wasted a ticket. There's no gain. Tip number two, if your ram has more than half health and you don't have the cauldron point yet, don't bother using all of your tickets to go fight for the cauldron. Just push the ram. You can break through a gate and gain your health back before the cauldron can do significant damage to your ram. So it doesn't matter. It's a net zero. Just keep your tickets, keep fighting the ram, keep pushing it. Tip number three, there's a lot of huge group fights over nothing, just stop doing that. If you're not at the Guardian, the Health Point, or the Minion Lane, there's no point in fighting there, just distract and avoid. ETFO and just stop, just stop doing random garbage. So those were his three tips that he wanted everybody to know, but that's how you play Breach. So there they are, you now know how to play Breach better, from the words of a developer. So let's jump into patch notes. The first one is going to be huge for a lot of players out there. Predator's Mercy will now use the regular Break Apart animation reaction. This lets you only get one heavy in instead of a second free heavy. This means that Predator's Mercy is no longer a guaranteed death sentence. And to pair with that, Shaman's Bite now applies grab damage reduction if you were hit by two unique external attackers. So if you have a full team ganking you and a Shaman bites you, you now get grab armor, which is a heavy damage reduction. I think it's 80% on all attacks other than the first attack to hit you. That's a pretty huge nerf to Shaman's Bite. It should help a lot with a lot of pug groups. The next change would be Tian Di and Zhang Jun can now properly dodge attacks with their dodge heavies. The issue is, is they previously are at 300 and 400 milliseconds respectively on their dodge heavies. This is being tweaked to be 500 milliseconds for both meaning when you watch the dodge animation, it should properly sync up with when a dodge actually happens. They are fixing bugs with the parry counters being thrown at unintended targets, so they should now hit what you want them to hit. They've also done some minor tweaks to how stamina is consumed and synced animations. The synced animations are going to be applying to a handful of characters, namely Valkyrie, Shaolin, and Zhang Jun. And to go with that, the Zhang Jun can no longer Sifu's poise out of confirmed hits like the Highlander's superior lights, and Doshi's choke will be properly interrupted if the enemy is hit during the choke. So the choke is no longer just hold them while they get wailed on, they will now drop from the choke when they get hit. That's about it for balance changes. We will be getting more of those in the actual patch notes, but those are the ones they covered on stream, so that's what we have for now. Moving on from fighter balance, we have map fixes. One thing is that they're changing the way Breach works, so the archers targeting zones are all manually placed on the map, and they've had further refinement on them. They're making them all larger, and they should remain more consistent between each map. In addition to that, the archers can now target the commander when able to. 
Looking at win percentage, this makes for a good change in balance, as it does help you whittle down the commander more efficiently if you're able to repeatedly pull him out from his default position where he's hidden behind cover. As an additional nerf, the commander now has normal tracking on his swings, so you can properly dodge them. As it currently stands before the patch, the commander will swing and you can wait for the correct time to dodge, dodge it, get an animation that you dodged it, and then still take damage. This is being fixed, it should no longer track you and do a full 180 onto you when you do a dodge. They have fixed some general bugs with various breach maps where you could fall through the world. These were mostly in breach maps, but another thing that it'll be fixing is that Beachhead had an uh, area where you could go out of the map and go onto one of the boats, and you had to glitch through the boat to get onto it. That has also been fixed as well as the part of the breachhead map where you could fall through the world if you rolled into a specific wall. So that map has been fixed up a little bit. Some of the other maps have been fixed up. It's not exclusive to breach, just a bunch of various map stuff has been fixed. Following up the maps, we have the general fixes. They are tweaking the camera slightly to make external attacks easier to see. They didn't show us an example, so we'll have to wait until the 13th to find out how this is really going to change. But they're saying that this should make left side external attacks easier to see. So I'm thinking they're just going to center the character a little bit better than they currently do, as that would give you the ability to see the left hand side easier. A bunch of feats have lost their super armor properties on activation, meaning that they can be interrupted. In particular, this will be largely affecting the Kiai, and then a change that I've thought we've needed for far too long. The level 3 bots are being changed. This isn't quite how I wanted it, I wanted more so a bot level 2.5, so we kept the 3s, but they're not doing that. Anyways, the level 3 bots now block and parry less. They will sometimes fail on purpose. The reasoning behind this is that the bots currently parry and don't fall for feints, they don't fall for soft feints, they just parry everything, there's no way to trick them. A counter guard break perfectly, all of that jazz. So they're altering them so that you can actually throw out some moves and get some hits in. They should react more similarly to a decent player character rather than an input reading bot. One thing this will do as well is if you're in chi stance as a Shaolin and flip your guard around, they'll no longer spy on you and match your guard. To go with that bot nerf, they're also nerfing bots map wide revives that were not supposed to be happening. So that shouldn't be an issue anymore. The other thing to do with bot revives is they are going to have bots respawn. The same thing we do where we press A or space or whichever button. Bots will do that sooner rather than waiting for an exceptionally long time. Moving on from bots, we have a bug fix that is fixing the hero model swap glitch. I'm sure if you've browsed the subreddit at all in the last 2-3 weeks, you've seen far too many posts about this. So that is going to be fixed. I kind of wish we could keep the bug, but also have the UI fixed. I did accidentally buy some stuff for Warlord when I moused over it and then clicked on Valkyrie, so I'm a bit bummed about that. That'll be fixed now, but we can't do funny things like the Shigoki completing Nusha executions. They also fixed a bunch of visual bugs on various characters. We'll get a full list of those on the patch notes, but this is like armor, clipping stuff with ornaments, things not aligning properly, all of that jazz. And as a final note, we should have properly muting voice chats, both on our side and the game side where other people are talking to us. One bug they specifically called out is that voice chat output will become muted when you minimize the game, while well, you have the mute while minimized option enabled. So that means if you minimize your game, your microphone, if it's set to automatic, you'll no longer talk in game, so if you alt tab to shit talk, you won't broadcast that to your entire team. That's always a good thing. That should wrap up all of the changes that were discussed today. Hopefully we get the full list of patch notes so we can have the definitive this is what's going to be in the patch rather than the preliminary notes that they went over today. Overall I'm thinking these bug fixes make for a much better game than we had yesterday so I'm excited to have it in practice. As always thank you for watching I hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the battlefield.